Hey, what's going on now? So many people confuse snakes with legless lizards. Today, we're gonna get to the bottom of that whole conundrum. There are two things I've loved most in this life, bikes and reptiles. Now, I crisscross the globe learning about all kinds of incredible animals. Sometimes, I know what I'm doing. Other times, I'm in over okay, my head. Wrong. But one thing's for certain, we'll come away a whole lot smarter after every adventure. This is Camp Kennedy. Hey, what's going on guys? So I have here a southern hognose snake and David from Bush Wildlife is holding the eastern glass lizard. And uh, so many people confuse the legless lizard with a snake. And unfortunately, uh, it, it usually winds up with the lizard being killed for no reason, and we don't like to kill even snakes, I just wanna make that clear, but we wanna educate you so you know what the difference is between a lizard and a snake, like I have here in my hand. So the first things, David, we're gonna tell people to pay attention to the eyes, huh? Well, yes, one of the things that people don't realize is that snakes do not have eyelids, so their eyes are always open, where lizards actually have eyelids and they can blink their eyes. That's right. So there's one major difference. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to get close to the snake to be able yeah. to notice that, and you'd have to get the glasses or to close its eyes, but yep. that is a big difference between the two. Yeah, definitely. And you know, the other cool thing about a snake is a snake is actually looking out, you can say, in a sense, from inside its body because the actual clear, opaque, well, it becomes opaque when the animal sheds, but it's a clear scale that goes over the eyeball. So essentially, the animal's looking out through, through its skin. Really cool. So you can see right here, this little hoggy can't blink. And then there's something else that lizards have that snakes don't, and that is, folks, they have ear openings. Yeah. And if you take a look very, very closely, there's a little dot that's there. There you go. That little dot happens to be his ear opening. So lizards have ear openings, snakes do not. Snakes, they use their ability to feel vibrations mm -hmm. as their way of being able to hear. And that's why if you're ever in snake country, the best thing for you to do when walking through grass, just stomp your feet to let the animal know you're there. If you're one of those folks who's a little bit nervous of snakes, just give it a good stomp. And snakes can feel that because essentially their entire body is one giant receptor for vibration because their whole body's on the ground. So when they feel that vibration, they want to get away from it because they know they could be trampled on. Now, another really cool thing why they call this the glass lizard, and a misnomer, a mistaken name is the glass snake, which we're trying to demystify here, is... The fact that its tail can break off and regenerate itself. Snakes, if they lose their tail, they end up with a little stub. Right. But the glass lizard, on the other hand, if its tail breaks off, it can actually regenerate or rejuvenate its tail and actually grow it back. That's called caudal autonomy. It's a real big word for you folks. That's when a lizard can grow back its tail. And this actual lizard has grown back a portion of its tail. Another cool thing we want to point out about the tails is so many people think that snakes are all tail. They think their tail starts from here. And in fact, that's not true. If you look at my thumb right here, this is the vent for the snake. Now, some of you already know this. I'm talking about the new folks that have just joined us here on Camp Cannon. It's always cool to help out those noobs so they can understand and get right in line with what you experts already know. So I'm looking right here at my thumb to the tip of his tail, very small, but David, why don't you show them if you can. Look at this. This is the vent of the glass lizard, and the rest of this is the tail. Now, it might be kind of neat if we can turn the, the um, snake around, yep. and we've got them side by side, and you can see, look, the tail on the snake is very, very short in comparison to its body, where the glass lizard's tail is very, very long. And, and this guy's tail would have been even longer had it not chosen to break it off uh, when this animal came in it possibly might have been attacked it was a wild animal that was found in someone's yard so you just want to make sure you know it probably just got rid of that as a defensive uh, situation right well yes and, and that is one of the ways that the glass lizard in all lizards are mm -hmm. able to save themselves from a predator by allowing their tail to break off and them getting away yeah now old folklore said that the glass lizard would shatter itself into a thousand little pieces and once danger was gone, put itself back together. We know that that's not possible, but most certainly it has the ability to lose a good portion of what appears to be the body. And while a predator might be playing with the wiggling tail, 
the rest of the glass lizard has gone off to safety. Yeah. And the legless lizards belong to the skink family. They're a type of skink. And skinks themselves are lizards that most of the time have reduced limbs. So what you're looking at is actually two animals that are in the same order. Scientists place them in the same order in taxonomy. It's called squamata. So you have snakes, and on the other side, their cousins, the lizards. But both are in the order squamata. So you can just see how there's a lot of similarities. They both use their tongue to get chemical cues. But as we just said here, folks, there are some differences also. And that's gonna be it for this little tutorial, Dave. Uh, I'm in my favorite place at the sanctuary. It's out back behind the snake house. And I always appreciate you lending me your beautiful animals and your knowledge to help dispel some myths. We'll see you next time on Camp Cannon, everybody.